What's up guys? Welcome to Mass Effect Talks. This is subscriber Christmas list edition episode number two. We are going to talk about the gangs today. Specifically the ones that are most mostly located on Omega. Um, these, ga these gangs don't just stay in Omega. But, you know, the ones that we saw all together as a big family in Omega as we took down Archangel. So that includes the Blue Suns, Eclipse, uh, Blood Pack, and a gang that probably some of you don't know or haven't heard of. Uh, they, they come out um, mostly in this book, Retribution. They're called the Talons. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about them, too, because I think they might be playing a bigger role in Mass Effect 3. They weren't even mentioned in the games. So let's start off with the Blue Suns. The Blue Suns, I like to call them the most popular. They're a private security organization, but in reality they're mercenaries for hire. They operate in the Scalian Verge. There's no real governing force in the Scalian Verge, so the Blue Suns are pretty much free to do whatever they want. Um, in this area. The Blue Suns have a reputation for being both discreet and ruthlessly efficient. Um, they are the most popular gang. By popular, I don't mean that, uh, you know, people want to join their gang, uh, more than any other group. They're just, they're, mo they're the most shown on screen in games. Um, the other gangs don't, aren't shown as much as the Blue Suns. They were, they were founded by Zaid Masani and Vito Santiago. Um, I really liked this aspect of the game. I mean, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that Zaid was one of the ones that started the Blue Suns. And Zaid was pretty much the one that controlled the mercenaries. Um, Vito uh, managed the finances, so it was Zaid that was running the, the whole shebang. The reason why... Uh, arguments started between Zaid and Vito, and they ended up splitting up, was because Vito wanted to hire Batarians. He he thought, since he was, you know, the, the one in charge of finances, he said that if they were to hire Batarians, it would be, uh, you know, cheaper labor for them. Uh, and Zaid didn't want that. Zaid was like, no, I don't want, I don't want Batarians in the Blue Suns. And Vito kind of got pissed off, and uh, he basically retaliated against Zaid. He betrayed him and he turned a lot of uh, their, a lot of Zaid's men against him and eventually Vito shot Zaid in the head. So that's why Zaid has all those scars in his face. And that's when Vito took over the Blue Suns. And that's also when uh, the Blue Suns started to hire Batarians. So that's why there's a lot of Batarians. You see a lot of Batarians in the Blue Suns, and that was after Vito took charge. The Blue Suns pretty much consists of Batarians, Turians, and humans, but they also use a lot of uh, different types of mechs. As you all might know, the, the armor of the Blue Suns is blue and white, and they have a blue sun on their chest. A lot of times, a lot of the Blue Suns mercenaries will have a blue sun somewhere um, tattooed on their body. Um, but it's kind of crazy because when they have to do, uh, like, a high-risk job where they have to be, like, undercover, um, they, the tattoo, they have to remove it with an acid wash. I was like, I, I wouldn't even get the tattoo in the first place. So that it could prevent them from being identified as being a Blue Suns mercenary. Um, but afterwards, some of them actually reapply it. I'm like... Why would you even go through reapplying it again? What if you have another mission that required you to freaking get an acid wash? In the first Mass Effect novel, uh, Mass Effect Revelation, the Blue Suns are hired by. I've talked to a talk. I've talked about him a few times. Edon Haddad. I think I'm saying his name wrong. I don't know how to pronounce his damn name. Haddad. He was a Batarian. Um, and uh, I talked about him in the Batarian Mass Effect talks last week. Uh, he was the one, him and his team were the ones that came in contact with Sovereign in space. But this Iran Haddad guy pretty much uh, hired the Blue Suns um, for protection of, on his own, but also 
uh, to to attack the Systems Alliance in this facility uh, at Sidon. This is all in the plot of the first book. In the comic, Mass, Mass Effect Red Redemption, um, the one with the Liara, where they're looking for uh, for Shepard's body, the Blue Suns are actually the ones that find Shepard's body on Alcara. The Blue Suns were, hi were hired by the Shadow Broker, um, so they were the first ones to find Shepard's body, and then Liara and the Drell, Farron, I think his name was, end up getting Shepard's body afterwards. In Mass Effect 2, the, the Blue Suns show up a lot. I mean, there's missions that revolve around the, the Blue Suns. On Omega, the Blue Suns control the Gazu uh, district. They run protection rackets and earn credits from the slum citizens. Uh, even though the Blue Suns run this, this, uh, this district pretty tight, a lot of the citizens from this district will say that they actually prefer the Blue Suns being there. Especially after the plague hits. The plague that the collectors um, put on Omega. After the, the plague, a lot of people say that they prefer to be in Blue Suns protected districts instead of having to fend for themselves against the plague. Um, the plague was pretty much what caused the Blue Suns from losing their, their power. Uh, in this district because the Blue Suns consist of a high number of Batarians and Turians and the plague attacks um, races, other races that are not human or that are not Vorcha so uh, that's when um, these a lot, a huge amount of the, the mercenaries of the Blue Suns started to go weak and started to get sick and then the Blood Pack were the ones that, that were able to take more uh, power over this district because the blood pack has a, a large number of Vorcha in their in their in their game um, so that's how the Blue Suns lost the power over the Gozu Gozu district. The Blue Suns also uh, started killing a lot of humans in the district because they thought that the humans had been the ones that that set out the plague since they were uh, one of the one one of the only species that were immune to it. This is where the Blue Suns sent a squad to to Morden Solus's uh, clinic because they found out that he was sheltering humans. So they tried to burn the clinic down, but this is when Morden bust the cap up they booties. Archangel was also another reason uh, for the for uh, pretty much wreaking havoc on all of the gangs on Omega. Um, this was also the reason why the three gangs that had never come together, they finally came together like a big, nice, happy family that doesn't talk at the dinner table. Archangel pretty much um, stopped a lot of Blue Sun's operations. He disrupted meetings, smuggling deals, uh, stopped shipments, and then killing their members. So, um and destroying their gunships. So for a while, the Blue Suns were actually hesitant to take jobs on Omega while or Archangel was there and his team. So they were pretty desperate. This is when they, they, uh, they teamed up with, the, with Eclipse and the, Blue, and the Blood Pack. They actually decided to do this, the Blue Suns, after Archangel and his team tried to kill the leader of the Blue Suns, which was uh, Tarek. But then the three gangs were able to uh, convince Sidonis to uh, to pretty much betray Archangel and his team. That's where the gangs pretty much wiped out uh, Archangel's team. We also find out that the Blue Suns own and run the high security prison purgatory where Jack was being held. They beat their prisoners and pretty much do any, anything and everything to them. The Blue Suns also come out when you get Grunt on the, the planet Corliss. The warlord Okir hired the Blue Suns to provide funding and security for him while he worked on his project. Okir pretty much promised all of the Krogan that he was, he was producing um, as, as firepower. For the Blue Suns, like he was saying, well, the Krogan that I that I make that aren't perfect, like he wanted them, you could have them, and they could be, you know, your your muscle. And uh, Jador, which was the the one in charge of this operation, 
she was uh she was pretty happy about that she was like hells yeah i'm gonna get a krogan as a pet what, what? but then she got all pissed off because the krogan um were unstable and unreliable they were also uh in zaid's loyalty mission this was a big a big um mission with the blue suns it was pretty much had to do with the blue suns because it was uh it had to do with um with Vito on the planet Zoria. The planet is pretty much controlled by the Blue Suns and they take over this uh, refinery and force the workers into slavery. And then uh, Zaid and Shepard get there and they, uh, and Zaid pretty much wants revenge for what Vito did to him. The Blue Suns also show up in Garrus's lo loyalty mission on the Citadel, they protect Harkin. So they show up a lot during Mass Effect 2. They are the one gang that gets the most screen time. Uh, so that's why they're the most popular. Now let me talk about Eclipse. These I like to call the most skilled. They're a mercenary corporation that was founded by the Asari Commando Jonah Sedaris. They don't they don't really care what jobs they're hired to do as long as the 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 person that's hiring them is willing to pay a good amount of money. Uh the the Eclipse mercenaries work in teams of troopers and vanguards which may be led by more experienced commando units. They also use a lot of mechs uh, as support. They generally seem to favor stealth. Stealth and uh, discrimination and intelligence. That's why I say that they're the most skilled, because they're the ones that you see using um, biotics and using more tech powers. And uh, they are definitely, out of all the gangs, the ones that have the, the, best, um, the best technology. They pretty much consist of Asari, uh, Salarians, and humans. They're pretty big on smuggling. Uh, they control nearly 20% of all smuggling on Omega. And they specialize in transporting illicit goods and criminals from place to place. The armor for Eclipse is yellow and black. And on their chest, they have a, a symbol of a, an Eclipse with a big E, like a capital E in the middle. In Mass Effect 2, you come into contact with Eclipse on Omega. Uh, where you meet the one of their leaders, Jareth. He was a Salarian, that really dark red Salarian. <clears throat> the strange thing about him is that he's not wearing your typical Eclipse um, armor. He was the one that was seeking a, a revenge against Archangel because he killed his brother. Eclipse was also the gang that was employed by Nisana Dantius. She was the Asari that Thane wanted to kill on, I on Ilium. She hired Eclipse mercenaries to uh, to protect her. When they're trying to recruit Samara on Ilium, you also come in contact with the e with Eclipse and also a, like a side group of Eclipse. It's called the Sisterhood. They primarily recruit young Asari, who, as part of their initiation into the group, must perform one murder. Uh, the Sisterhood is probably only on Ilium. Because they do, they do consist only of Asari, but they are still part of Eclipse. Eclipse was also hired by Niket. This is during Miranda's loyalty mission to uh, to help transport Oriana, uh, Miranda's sister, and also in the Kasumi downloadable content. Eclipse is the group that provides security for. Donovan Hawk. Well, you also see that the guards that are assigned to Hawk's uh, estate wear different uniforms. It's an in, it's they have an inverted color scheme. So the black the suit the the, the armor is actually black, um, with a white logo. This this is probably used just to differentiate them uh, from the standard troops. So that's pretty much it for the, for Eclipse. Now let's talk about the Blood Pack. The Blood Pack I like to call them the most vicious. They were originally a small Terminus Systems. The Terminus Systems is beyond Citadel space. Uh, a small Terminus System Vorcha gang. They were uh, transformed into a mercenary legion uh, by visionary Krogan battlemaster Gnar Rang. This battlemaster was exiled. Uh, for striking a female in anger. So he pretty much led the Vorcha, the Vorcha pack, as a pirate crew. Everything that he did um, with 
the the the, the this Vorcha pack. Uh, pretty much made him rich. His notoriety ensured his initial public offering for investors made him rich beyond most Krogan's dreams. And this uh, actually let him return triumphantly to his clan. So he wasn't exiled anymore. The Blood Pack is banned from Citadel space, but they do bribe their, themselves into space ports every now and then. The Blood Pack is probably one of the only gangs that actually only focuses on high-risk missions, on high-risk jobs. Um, they don't, they don't, they don't take simple bodyguarding uh, jobs. So they pretty much pride themselves for accepting untouchable contracts. They prefer the the jobs with maximum violence. They they pretty much consist of Vorcha and Krogan, and they also have Varen as war beasts. 